Hey guys, this is Pesh from Bivam.com, and for the past few months, I've been using my phone a lot, and that means I've come across some really cool hidden Android features, tricks, settings, options, basically everything, and it's time to share. I'll be telling you eight hidden Android settings that you should be changing right away and you're going to love it. And I'm not just including stock Android settings, I'm including settings for Mi UI, One UI, Oxygen OS, Realme UI. So yeah, make sure to watch this video till the very end. Now before we begin, you should probably start with a non-Android setting and that's hitting the bell icon. Yeah, hit that to get notified every time we post an awesome new video. Shameless plug, but hit the bell icon. Now let's begin. Now first up is a super cool Android setting that I honestly did not even know that it existed. I'm talking about an option that disables all of the sensors in your phone with just a single tap, be it the usual sensors like proximity or light sensor or the camera or the microphone. So here's how to turn it on. Just enable developer options first and then in the developer options page look for quick settings developer tiles and here just enable sensors off. Now I can just go to quick settings and I can use this option to turn off all the sensors on the phone. Now say I open up the camera app here, as you can see it's not working. It shows an error here while on some phones there's just a black screen. Now let's try recording an audio. Well I'm speaking here and as you can see there's nothing on the audio front, there's no audio being recorded. So this whole senses off feature works and I think this is quite interesting because of two reasons. One this can be good if you want to conserve your battery life. And second, it can be great if you're privacy focused and you don't want any of the apps and services to use these sensors. So live caption is a feature that I remember Google announcing with Android 10 and I thought it was super cool, but it was Pixel 4 exclusive back then. However, it has started rolling out to more phones recently and I think it's an Android setting that you must know. So enabling it is pretty simple. You can turn it on from the quick settings page or you'll find it in the settings page. So make sure to search for live caption in settings. Now once you've enabled it, just play any video in any app. For example, say you're scrolling on Facebook, you don't really need to turn up the volume because the live caption feature will automatically capture the audio and transcribe it into caption in real time and show it like this. Yeah, this is quite an interesting feature. Anyway, so far I've only seen the live caption feature in stock Android, One UI 2.5, Oxygen OS. So phones with other skins will have to wait a bit, but it should arrive soon. So Google recently started rolling out its AirDrop-like file transfer feature called Nearby Share to all Android devices running Android 6, Marshmallow and above. And yeah, the boring name aside, I think this is a great feature because you no longer need third-party apps to share files between your phones. So to enable it, all you need to do is go to quick settings, edit the tiles and check if you have a nearby share tile here. If it's there, just add it to the quick settings page and that's it. Now you can use it. Just tapping it up brings up this prompt and you can just turn it on and you'll be visible to other devices. Now if you want to send a file using nearby share, you'll find the nearby share option in the share sheet. So just tap it after which it will look for devices with nearby share turned on. Now you can just select the device you want to send the file to and that's it. It's sent and yeah, it's super handy because Android finally has a native file transfer feature. So voice typing in regional languages is not something new, but it has to be one of the most underrated features in Android. Gbo to be more specific. I mean, it's very handy for parents who don't like typing and you know, they can just use their voice to type in the language. See, my parents generally send me voice messages, but some things require typing. So it's very simple. All you need to do is add Hindi as one of the languages in Gboard. Now here's me voice typing in Hindi and you can see it's so accurate. How do you feel about the video? And just like in Hindi videos, they say like, kar do, share, kar do, subscribe, kar do. like, karne ke paise thodi lagte like, kar do, Aise hi bolte na. trust me, I've tried voice typing in English and it's not as good as this, at least with an Indian accent, maybe. Plus, what I like is there are so many other Indian languages and there's support for offline voice typing, too. I find it really good because I taught this to my father and he really enjoys typing like this. So one area where Android kind of lags behind iOS is on the whole ecosystem front. And Google has been trying to fix it via Chrome and it makes sense because Chrome is available everywhere, be it Windows or Mac. And it's a software that a lot of people use. 
So thanks to Chrome, you can now copy and paste text between your Android smartphone and your PC or laptop. Now first, you'll have to enable the clipboard flags on Chrome Android and Chrome Windows. Well, I'll mention the names of the flags in the description down below, but you can just search for clipboard in Chrome flags and enable everything you find. Now, here's how it works. So I can just copy a text in Chrome and right click. Now, as you can see, the context menu shows copy to Realme phone because I've been using the Realme 7. Now I can just use this and my phone will get a notification of the text copy. And I can just go ahead and paste the text. Now this also works the other way. I can just share a text on Chrome on my phone to my laptop and then paste it on my MacBook. It's very seamless. Now those were some Android specific options, but I also have some cool Android settings for MIUI, One UI and Real MIUI. First, let's start with MIUI. So we recently did a video on MIUI bloatware and ads and how to remove them. And if you haven't checked it out, go ahead, check it out. And a lot of you were asking, how did I get the Google Discover page on the Redmi Note 9 I was using? I mean, I get it, the app wall page isn't something that everyone finds handy. And MIUI users have been asking for the Google page in MIUI launcher since forever. Well, the good news is that the MIUI 12 update in India brings the Google Discover page in the MIUI launcher. As you can see in the launcher settings of the Note 9 running MIUI 12, there is a minus one screen option that you can use to switch to the Google Discover page from App One. So make sure to use this setting whenever you update your phone to MIUI 12. Now coming to Realme UI, when I was using the Realme 7 and Realme 7 Pro, I came across an option that is just super handy. So I'm talking about the process manager feature, which you can access by going to settings, additional settings, and yeah, process manager. So as you can see, this lists you all of the apps running on your phone right now, be third-party apps or system apps, and it even shows the amount of RAM it's using up. Now what's strange is I haven't used Wear OS by Google in a long, long time, and it's still here running in the background. So I can just end this process or freeze it. It's a great option if you think an app is draining your phone's battery in the background or maybe an app is spying on you. So when you're gaming and you get a call and you get it in this pop-up like window up top on most phones, but the problem is the moment you accept the call, you go full screen with the phone app, which is annoying because now you have to manually switch back to the game and only then the call UI will turn into a pop-up. But this is where a One UI option is great. In the phone settings, you get this call display while using apps option. Here in the bottom, there's a keep calls in pop-up option, which makes sure that even when you answer a call, say while gaming, it will remain in the pop-up and not go full screen. So how cool is that? So we all know that Google Photos brings some really handy video editing tools like the option to stabilize, trim, rotate the video, but there are times when you want to mute a video, aka remove the audio from a video and send it to someone. Well, Google Photos lets you do that as well. Pretty easily, I must say. So it's pretty simple. Just open up a video in Google Photos, hit the edit button. And now you can see the speaker icon here, right? Just tap on it and that's it. The audio from the video has been removed. Now you can just save the copy of the video and it'll be without any sound. And yeah, you can send it to anyone you want. How cool is that? Well, those are some really cool hidden Android settings that you should be definitely trying. And I think this is a great list. And if you think that too, make sure to like this video, make sure to share it. But yeah, make sure to like it. Anyway, my favorite option in this whole list is the disable senses option. But what's yours? Tell us in the comment section below and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.